the basics here. There's not any kind of like fabulous introspective Don't worry. or anything. Don't worry, that's the basics is fine. If you're gonna film the show, you'll get kind of fabulous shit. Okay. Probably need a mic in this. Well that's the mic there, isn't it? Oh you almost stick it. May I? Please. Thank you. Too bright. That's bright, but I mean, you know, I can work with it if that's, you, if that's what you want to work with. Mm. Okay. Okay. On Don't Try This at Home, do you debate with yourself as to how many political songs or how many love songs you decide to include on the album? No, not really, no. I, um, I just write the songs and and look at the album in, in the context of, of what's happened to me in the last couple of years since the last album. So sometimes there are political songs, there's a political situation occurring, and I make sure there are political songs that reflect that. For instance, since the last album, both your country and my country have been involved in an, a war uh, in, the, uh, in the Persian Gulf, so consequently that was reflected in songs like Rumours of War. Um, I think. Um, an issue like HIV and AIDS has become very, very important. So that's in the, the album and songs like Sexuality and Trust. But also on a personal side, the love songs are very, very important to me. And it wouldn't be a Billy Bragg album that was just all political. That wouldn't really reflect the real me. So I try and make a record that reflects the real me. I was real interested in, in the song Trust. I read a, a review of it, and I think it was by a male reviewer that said that uh, it was about uh, pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And another person listening to the song thought it was about sexual abuse. And I just wondered um, what you were thinking of when you wrote that. Well, I was thinking about, um, really, I was thinking about uh, penetrative sex, really. Uh, because uh, it seems to me that women have always had to. Um, think and act responsibly when they're involved in penetrative sex because there's a possibility that they may get pregnant and their lives may change uh, physically and emotionally. They may have to make some very, very tough decisions. And men have never really had to worry about that uh, until now because of the HIV virus. Now men have to also begin to take responsibility during sex. And that was very interesting for the first time. I thought perhaps men might get some tiny insight into the, mm. how um, uh, into, into what uh, risks women are taking when they take part in, uh, in penetrative sex uh, with, a, with a man. Because men don't really consider that. They don't come into their mind. They just, they're just there and then, and then they're away. And that's it as far as they're concerned. So I thought that was a very, very important uh, angle to talk about um, the uh, HIV virus, but also about m men's uh, attitudes towards women and towards sex. So. Um, Really, it can be about if you're a woman listening and it talks to you about your feelings when you missed a period and thought you were pregnant, then it's for you. If you're a man listening and it talks about uh, uh, some sex you had with, uh, with your partner, with a, with a friend, and now you're worried that you may have contracted uh, a sexually transmitted disease or something like that, it applies to you as well. Uh, but I wouldn't really say it's necessarily about child abuse. It's really about the sexual act and the responsibility that we should all have towards that act. Sexuality, the first single, has a real bold, open attitude about it. How did you go about writing that? Well, funny enough, I, uh, it was after I wrote Trust, I realised that I've written this really great song that says what I want to say, but it's a bit of a downer. So in order to write a song that not only said something about safe sex, but got played on the radio where it mattered so that people could hear it, rather than just the, the, the you know, people who come to the shows or buy the record, uh, I decided to try and write a, a pop song that talked about safe sex. And sexuality was the result, a collaboration with uh, Johnny Marr, who supplied the, the chords, uh, the big melody and the big production, and me supplying the lyrics and, uh, and some of the attitude. And it had to be open. I had to say in the first three lines, I had to talk about my own sexuality, but uh, when I say, you know, I've had relations with girls from many nations uh, and uh, made passes at women of all classes, but then I also had to be very clearly uh, make sure that the song wasn't gender specific, which is why the next line is, and just because you're gay, I won't turn you away. Because I think it's very dangerous if we talk about uh, HIV and AIDS in terms of specific gender or specific minority or specific sexual practices. AIDS, the virus, does not in any way 
taking into any consideration your gender, your minority, your sexual practices. It's something that's uh, a threat to all of us. So I think we do ourselves a dangerous disservice by trying to talk about it in purely in terms of gay, heterosexual, black, white, male, female. It's it's after all of us, and we all have to take responsibility for it. What about moving the goalposts? Uh, a lot of people think it's about long-term relationships. Now they're constantly evolving, and some people say that it's it's about um, settling for less. What what do you think? Um. Well, what I think, and I wrote it, so I probably this probably makes probably the most sense. What everyone thinks, I think it's about. Being in a long-term relationship with someone where for a long time you think that you have the same goals and the same, you're moving in the same direction uh, and you take it for granted that you are and then one day you find out that actually you're wrong and you're not moving in the same direction and what's happening is your partner has, dis has changed their priorities and they either haven't told you or you haven't realised because you, you've been taking your partner for granted. So it's about those kind of things, particularly with the backdrop of the changing world of, of uh, East and West, the Soviet Union and stuff like that. That's all those priorities, all the Cold War priorities have disappeared. And uh, I kind of like compare that, which I'll talk about in the first verse, Gennady Gerasimov, who gets mentioned there, is the uh, original um, a Russian foreign ministry spokesman who talked first about um, Glasnost and uh, tried to explain Glasnost to, to the American media. I used to see him on CNN all the time. I think he's out of fashion now. Uh, and then in the second verse, it's about two people and and how uh, some things that you take for granted, like line, um, heavens above, can this sticky stuff really be love? That, you know, that's just, you know, having sex with someone isn't love. Love is much, much more complex than that. And instead of just taking someone for granted and just moving towards what you think is a specific goal, really love and keeping relationships going is much more of a compromise where you try and understand what your partner's needs are and try as best you can to, to uh, to cater to those needs, whilst they also understand a little bit about you. It's all give and take, love. It's not just all take or all give, or it shouldn't be any. Who are your inspirations, personally and musically? Um, personally, I'm inspired by uh, by people like um, well, Phil Oakes, I suppose, as a, as a performer, uh, as someone who's trying to um, make some kind of uh, political popular culture. Um, by, uh, as a guitar player, Ry Kuda, um, not for what he plays, but, but for what he doesn't play, because he's a very economic, the gaps he leaves are much more important than the, than, the, than the licks he plays. It's very, very important. You have to understand, often in, in, in creativity, less is more. You know, all this widdly widdly guitar playing stuff, don't prove nothing, just proves you can play guitar fast, you know. Would I be a better talker if I talked really fast? No. In the end, it's what I'm saying, rather than how fast I say it. So, uh, and um, as a musician, uh, as a political uh, activist, there's one person who's been a bigger influence on me than anybody else, and that person is Margaret Thatcher. I think without Margaret Thatcher, I would not have developed into the political activist, stroke songwriter, stroke human being that I am. Her confrontational style of government was a continual threat to my uh, peace of mind and my uh, family, their expectations, the idea of, of living in a caring society, that's what politicised me, not reading Marx or reading politics at school, but suddenly realising that the free healthcare, free education, decent housing, things that I benefited from and I took to, for granted to some extent were going to be threatened by Margaret Thatcher in the 1980s, that's what made me political. Have you found that young people in countries other than America um, have a more worldly outlook? Well, young people in countries other than America benefit from the fact that they have uh, media in their country that are more aware of what's happening around the world. Because of America's size, because of its power, uh, and because of its incredibly, I personally think, trivialising mass media. So much uh, important information is trivialised down to infotainment or sound bites. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to get a real uh, broad view a real you know a soundbite is looking through the keyhole on an issue you know it's not you know you want to you want to try and find out a little bit of what's happening and you haven't got time to read the newspapers every day you haven't got time to watch you know loads and loads of tv it's very hard to get information you see in in, in the rest of the world we have to be in particularly in a country like britain because what happens in america what happens in europe what happens in russia what happens in japan affects us we have to be aware or our media has to be aware of what's happening in those countries and what may you know, what may be coming along. So there's much more analytical stuff going on. So um, in some ways, yes, people are 
a little more aware uh, of what's happening. Not everybody, not every, that, please don't think that everybody around the world is more intelligent than you Americans, but the media in other countries is much more stimulating. Uh, than it is here in the United States of America. I realize you have a huge country with lots of different things happening on. It's very difficult to organize a national newspaper, a national, uh, you know, I'm surprised you even got a national government together after all this time, considering they don't do nothing, um, apart from serving industry and big business. So I understand all those, the reasons why, I mean, you know, we're 56 million people in a country the size of Wyoming in Britain. So, you know, it is not difficult to, to organize mass uh, media but I really find a I really find it difficult to keep in touch with what's happening when I'm here in the USA. And I think that's why not because the people are stupid but because the media is so trivialized. Well also I think education plays a part. It seems like we're taught, especially in small towns like Dayton, Ohio, we're taught that all we'll ever need is right here. If not in Ohio, just the United States. And yep. and we're just conditioned that our, our government is the best government yep. and we shouldn't really ask any questions. Or well, you see, education to me is to stimulate you to ask questions. I think that's the whole point of education, is to give you some idea of, of the world, some version of basic moral uh, truths, you know, to t and, and show you the, the difference between right and wrong as, as in a consensus. But really, it should also stimulate you to want to go out and find a bit about the world. And I think education is power. Whoever has education gets power. And that's why so many people are very often denied education. Because they also are very often not necessarily racial minorities, but economic minorities that people in power fear. Uh, if they are educated, they'll start asking questions. They'll start saying why. They'll start saying, well, look, you know, this just isn't fair. You know, why, why are you treating us like this in Dayton, Ohio, when in, you know, just up the road there in, in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where people are being treated differently, or in Canada, or in Europe? You know, there are other, you know, if you're, if you're educated to you think there's only one version of communism, and that's best um, exemplified by Joseph Stalin and his heirs, then I personally would say then communism is, a, you know, stay away from it because what Stalin did in the name of communism, I think is as bad as what Hitler did. Um, but that Stalin wasn't what Marx set out when he wanted to write, you know, what, what education should do should stimulate you to, to, to pick communism up as an item and look on the back and see who made it or who wrote it and say, oh, Karl Marx, well, maybe I should go and check out Karl Marx instead of just taking it from or everything I know about communism from Newsweek or something like that. A lot of people tend to trivialize the influence music has on people. How do you think music um, has changed well, society? Well, I, I, would, I would agree that music, pop music anyway is quite a trivial medium. On one hand, if all pop music ended tomorrow, no one would really be sorry, except perhaps Michael Jackson, because he'd not have a reason to exist. In fact, he probably ceased to exist. I think Michael Jackson only exists because we believe in him. If we stop believing he existed, he'd be gone. But um, I, I think that, as I, I know it's a trivial medium, pop music, but I also know there are certain songs that move me emotionally more than the great works of art. There are certain songs that can bring out feelings in me that I only normally get when I see a great sunset or, uh, or uh, a, a child and, and, and its mother and things like that, those kind of emotions, those really deep emotions. So on one hand I realise that pop is important in that sense, in the individual sense, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's a kind of trivial medium in a, in a commercial sense. But I, although I'm not totally convinced that pop and politics mix, I am sure that um, popular culture and pop music is a, uh, it's a, it's a good vehicle for political comment, political thought, you know, it is, uh, it is capable of carrying a very serious message. I doubt, however, that it's capable of changing the world. I wish it was, but I don't think so. I think the most it can be is a catalyst for change, you know. It makes people think and revolutions begin with a raising of consciousness. So that's, I think that's the role pop music has to play as a catalyst moving with other more dynamic forces in society. Okay, that's it. Um, can you use station ID? Yes, of course. Watching yeah. Southside Video in Dayton, Ohio, however you want to say okay. that. Watching uh, Stateside Video. Southside South, Video. Okay. Just, hi Dayton, I'm Billy Bragg, you're watching Southside. Whatever. Hi Dayton, this is Billy Bragg, you're watching Southside Video. Okay, and just um, another one, here's my next video. Hi, this is Billy Bragg on Southside Video. This is my next little clip. 
And it is a clip, so watch out. It might clip you. Okay, that's great. Thanks. All right, not at all. Tear down statues every day But it wouldn't even make the evening news If it happened in the USA Here come infotainment To warp your reality Henry Ford said that history is bunk and now it's just banality The healthcare system is under siege As AIDS moves from door to door But the government just looks the other way And hopes for a magic cure And hopes for a magic cure Hopes for a magic Hopes for a magic cure Hopes for the people of America Hopes for them from themselves Hopes for the suntans of a boy in the California girls Tell me the old, old story Tell me the truth this time Is Christopher Columbus An enemy or a friend of mine? The Rockin' Red Stars, ladies and gentlemen. It's difficult um, moving from town to town, trying to pick up information all the time. You do tend to be drawn towards USA Today, or as we refer to it on the bus, McNews, uh, or, uh, or CNN, because you can find it and you know there's going to be news there. And every now and then something flips by that catches your eye. And this morning it was some Native, uh, Native Americans demonstrating in New York City uh, about Thanksgiving. And when the, uh, the guys asked them what were they demonstrating about on Thanksgiving, what, did they, what was their point? And they said, well, it's like just the same as... Uh, celebrating Pearl Harbor Day. Digging boys for an extended stay Those were the final orders to come down Waiting to be saved in the Philippines. Wait forever for the young Marines. Now I believe to be here is right. And I have to say that I'm scared tonight crouching in this hole with a mouth full of sand what comes first the country or the man look at those slanted eyes coming up over the hill Catching us by surprise It's time to kill or to be killed Over here, over there It's the same everywhere A boy cries out for his mama Before he dies for his home Wanted to be as clever and strong as my best friend Lee. 
We grew up together along Half Moon Bay. Lee was Japanese or in the USA. When Tommy was fighting Jerry along the river scene, me and Lee, we wanted to do the same. Then they bombed Pearl Harbor at the break of day. I was headed for these islands when we was hauled away. And they said, look at his slanted eyes. He's guilty as guilty can be. Sent here as enemy spies. Sabotage the land of the free Over here, over there It's the same everywhere Boy cries out for his mama Before he dies for his home I never got home my platoon was never saved. Eats. And you're just spending them for your own Something stained, something white. 
waiting for the worms to climb You can never go there again Except in nightmares The voyeur who dares not come near Knows excitement is merely the beginning of fear Thank you, thank you. So, trends for the 1990s, what do you reckon? Mm, what? That was an interesting heckles, but I totally missed it. Bullshit for the 1990s. Yeah, I think there'll be a lot of bullshit in the 1990s. I'm allowed to say, it's ever so hard to do to a passing driver as you're trying to tonk down the I-91 at a positively European speed. Everyone listening at home now is thinking, I wonder what he's doing. Mind you, they'd be probably thinking that for the entire program, so it's nothing. My fear is this, my fear, my fear is this, which is uh, in the way that somehow, and don't ask me how it ever happened, but how it was that greed somehow became acceptable in the 1980s. Not only acceptable, but something that people were pleased to express their greed. Greed somehow became good and respectable in, a, in a some unspeakable way. I fear very much that racism will be the greed of the 1990s. You can see it, you can see it starting to happen already. You can see it happening uh, in Germany, where reunification day there, we were there doing some gigs in Hamburg. Uh, that day was marred by a number of attacks by neo-Nazis on foreign workers and the hostels where foreign workers live. And that's, yep, indeed, sir, I quite agree with you. It's something that, same sort of thing in, in, in this, uh, country with the, uh, the recent candidacy of David Duke down there in Louisiana and it's quite, yep, but I think it's quite, uh, it's quite 
easy for the media to feel complacent about it and say, well, you know, sitting in England, we can look over a long way away in Germany and say, well, they're bound to have neo-Nazis there because they have a Nazi past. In the same way that you can say, well, you know, those people down in Louisiana, they have this, you know, segregationist civil war thing. That's why they're like that down there. I think it's a bunch of bullshit. I think that there are racists in all our countries, in all our states, in all our towns, in all our bars, in our workplaces, our schools, our homes. Racists are everywhere and they have to be confronted wherever you find them. You have to speak out against them because when you don't speak out, you're complying with them. You make them think that you agree. You make them think that you, you're on their side. That's how racism grows and, and breeds. It goes that way. It has to be confronted wherever you find it, whoever's mouth it comes from, whichever side of the divide they are. Racism is around us and it must never be allowed, like greed did, to become respectable. It must never be allowed to become accepted. It has to be fought every inch of the way. So I want to dedicate this song. I want to dedicate this song to those who are trying to make racism, fascism, xenophobia. I want to dedicate this song to those kind of people who are trying to make it the greed uh, of the 1990s. I want to dedicate it specifically to the kind of uh, fascist who's on the street in your face, the scary type who's threatening you physically, the really frightening type of neo-Nazi like they have in Germany. But also, as far as I'm concerned, to the more disturbing type as well, I want to dedicate this song, the kind like David Duke, who are seeking to use the ballot box to gain some respectability for an evil fascist idea. This song is for both those kinds of neo-Nazi. It's called Accident Waiting to Happen. I've always been impressed with a girl who could sing for a supper and get breakfast as well. That's the way I am, heaven help me He said we don't like peace campaigners round here As he nailed another one to the wall and that's what gets me in trouble, heaven help me Goodbye good luck to the rubbish that you've spoken Goodbye and good luck to the promises you've broken your life has lost its dignity, its beauty, and its passion. You're an accident. The bar and you're giving the grief about the USSR That chip on your shoulder gets bigger as you get up here One of these nights you're gonna get caught It will give you a pregnant pause for thought You're a dedicated swallower of fascism Time up and time out for the liberties you've taken And if you choose to waste the way like death is back in fashion You're an accident waiting to happen Jeans are so unoriginal I have all the self-loathing of a wolf in sheep's clothing In this carnival of carnivores Heaven help me Goodbye and good luck To all the rubbish that you spoke of Goodbye and good luck To all the promises you've broken Your life has lost its dignity Its beauty and its passion
fascism. Mitten for you, Nigel, to play the bass in. 